This is a review that I'm very excited to be doing today, and one that is very special to me personally, and also very iconic for LEGO history. This is the first castle in the LEGO Classic Castle line, although I'll put an asterisk on that, and I can explain why next week. As you can see, this thing is entirely yellow, and as such, I always call it Cheese Castle. I remember as a kid, the first time I saw this castle was in the Ultimate LEGO book. The vibrant yellow colors caught my eye, as well as the 14 minifigures, which is just a crazy amount of minifigures to include in a single set. And ever since then, I've wanted to get this set, and it wasn't until just a couple years ago that I was able to actually get it. And then since then, I've been trying to track down better conditions for the minifigures, for the stickers, and for the box and instructions. So I'm very excited to have all of that now and be able to share that with you guys today. So this set was released in the year 1979 in Europe under the set number 375. It was then later released in 1981 in North America under the set number 6075. And as you can see, that is the box version that I have here. Now this North American box variant is actually a little bit more rare than the European release just because LEGO was not as big in North America at this time as it was in Europe. And as you can see on the box there, it says it's 779 pieces. And the original retail price on this was $48. So now that you've gotten a good look at the front of the box, we can go over the sides. On the top here, we can see that LEGO just calls this set Castle, since at the time it was the first castle. And that is the same thing that we see on the bottom here. On the right side, we see a picture of the castle opened up. And again, the same picture on the left side. So here on the back of the box, we can see all the very imaginative alternate builds. As I've said many times before, I wish LEGO didn't stop doing these on modern boxes, but I also wish even more that they provided instructions for some of the things they built on these older boxes, because I would absolutely love to build any of these models here. But with close to 800 pieces, that's usually just not reasonable with just looking at a single picture of a build like this. Either way, they look great. So now we'll take a look at the inside of the box flap since the whole front of the box just flips up. In the top left there, we see a little advertising blurb that says the specialized pieces in this LEGO brand building set add an extra dimension of realism to the fun of building and the excitement of creating. LEGO bricks are carefully crafted from the highest quality plastics available. They snap together firmly and come apart easily. Even after years of hard play, bricks from all LEGO sets are designed to work together too. So sets can be combined for added play value. Building with LEGO products offers an opportunity for your child to achieve a feeling of pride and accomplishment while developing creativity, and it's fun, new and different fun every day. All LEGO building sets are safe, non-toxic, durable, color fast. And I think it's funny that they mention that these bricks are made to last because this castle is coming up on 40 years now, and the bricks still work perfectly fine with any modern set, and I just love that about LEGO. So here on the inside, in the top left with the kid playing with it, we see the actual castle main model that's just opened up for play there. But then we also see what looks to be three other alternate builds, and they honestly look even cooler than the ones that we saw in the back of the box. And then of course we get some shots of the minifigures and the horses, which is always cool. So here we have the trays in the bottom of the box, and this is good because you're able to divide up the things like the base plates and the figures and all the pieces. And even on the top of the box there, you can see that it says use this box for storage, which is good because they actually provide a way to do that reasonably. So now that we've taken a good look at the box, here we have the instructions. And as you can see, the instructions are labeled here as set 375 and 6075. And I imagine that's just to save ink so that they didn't have to reprint the instructions depending on whatever region it was being uh, released in. So here on the back of the instructions, we see a play shot of the main build. And then we see an alternate build that we saw in the back of the box as well. And the instructions, I'm pretty sure, are hand-drawn. Uh, sometimes you'll see some wonky things or like weird proportions, sort of like, you know, you can see the studs on these are a little bit off. And some of the dimensions on the bricks are off, like you can see this one by one is a little too tall. So I just thought that was interesting and I wanted to show it off. And here we have all the figures at the end, which just look great together. So let's go ahead and start building.
So here's the completed set, and as you can see, it's got a crazy amount of minifigures coming in at 14, although only eight of those are unique, and then only four of them are actually very distinct at all. And we'll get into that when we look at them closer, so let's go ahead and do that. Our first knight here is the white knight on horseback, and he's got this nice uh, arrow-shaped crest on his shield there with a red pattern around it. And apart from that, he is just an all-white figure. And then he's got the same pattern on the front and back of his torso there. And all these patterns that you see are going to be stickers. And that's definitely one thing that can make this set incredibly difficult to get in good condition, is finding stickers that are even present at all. So he's got his brick-built horse here, similar to the ones that we saw in the Knights Tournament. But as you can see, it's got no barding here, and so it's just kind of a too wide black silhouette of a horse, and I think that looks pretty funny. But it's, it's charming to me. And especially given that they didn't have the specialized horse mold, I think they did okay with what they had at the time. And you can see that for the ears there, they just stuck a 1x2 tile between that 2x2 plate. I'm not sure if that's illegal. I always thought it was, but then they did it again in the uh, Apollo 5 lander. They used the flag print on the 1x2 tile, and they put that on the base, just slotted in like this. So I'm not quite sure about that. Either way, it's definitely something you don't see a lot from LEGO, if it is legal at all. So now we have just the knight by himself, and he's got the jousting pole there. And he's got the same helmet and visor piece that we saw in the knight's tournament. And that just flips up like that, and he's got the same generic smiley face underneath. So then we've got the guy that's walking alongside him, and I like that each of the horseback knights has one of these guys that's sort of like their following entourage. He's got the same patterns on his shield and torso there. And really the only difference with this guy is that instead of having the jousting pole, he has a short sword and then he's got this pointier helm instead of the visored helm. So our next horseback knight is the black knight and he's the only one on a white horse by contrast and I think that looks cool. It's built exactly the same as the black horses unsurprisingly. Here's a black knight by himself and you can see he's got the same pattern on the front and back and then on his shield as well. We'll see these patterns in the same places on all the knights. Um, it just varies depending on the color of the knight's outfit. He's got the same jousting pole and the same helmet and visor, although this time, obviously, the visor piece is in black. And it does the same thing there where you can slide it up. And then, of course, he's got his little entourage dude. And like I said, all these figures are pretty similar. They've just got little, like, outfit swaps or color changes. But all the legs and torsos are the same blank pieces, just color swapped. And then they've all got these little chest guard pieces and shields with different uh, stickers applied. And then they've all either got this plain helmet piece or the visored helmet piece with a different color visor. Here is the Red Knight, and I really like the vibrant blue of his uh, pattern there. He's got a black horse as well. So there we get a better look at this guy by himself. And one interesting thing about this knight that I've noticed is that in some places... His crest there is a little more purple than it is blue, so I'm not sure if that was just like a difference in production run or a difference in Europe or North America, um, but yeah, sometimes it's like this vibrant blue that we see here, and sometimes it's more of a darker purple color, so I just thought that was interesting. Obviously, he's got the same armor and helmet piece, and of course, that just flips up, although this one doesn't seem to like to do that. It more just falls off. And that is definitely one of the flaws with these pieces that I was talking about the Knights Tournament, is that they're just not very sturdy. Um, so this guy's not going to cooperate, but yeah, I mean, whatever. It looks good when it's down, but, you know, they're not very good for playability. And like I said, a lot of kids lost or broke these, so not a huge fan of them overall. Um, obviously, they're very iconic for this era, but I'm glad that LEGO has moved on to more durable visor pieces. <laughs> Here's his traveling companion, nothing new at this point. Again, same uh, crest and same getup, just a different helmet and weapon there. And then we've got our blue knight here, and he's got that nice purplish pink uh, regal crown crest on his shield there. Again, he's on his black horse, but we've seen plenty of those by this point. Moving that out of the way, we get a better look at the minifigure here. Same crest all around, as always. And this castle is definitely the Blue Knights, or the Royal Knights, or whatever you want to call this faction's castle, since they are the most represented in it, with 8 out of the 14 knights being from this faction. And an interesting thing for this guy is that in some of the early promotional materials for this set, you see that his uh, visor is blue, 
which is strange to me that they changed it to gray because all the other knights have the visor that matches the color of their torso and legs. So I'm not sure why he's the only one that has a light gray visor instead of a blue one like you see in the early uh, official photos. And unfortunately on this one we get to see what I was talking about with the flimsiness of these visor pieces. Uh, I'm not even sure how this happened. He's been sitting on a shelf for years and I never really get these things down. And I didn't notice it until I brought him down to film this uh, review. But he's actually got a crack right down the center of that visor there. So I don't think it was this way when I got it. I definitely feel like I would have noticed something like that. Uh, so pretty unfortunate that that's just apparently happened over time. As you can see, the way that it kind of stresses the pieces here uh, probably could just happen from sitting still for so long. So knowing me, I'll probably just go and get another one because that's really going to bother me now that I know about it. But either way, it is what it is. So then he's got the guy that travels with him. Now there's actually two of these in this set. I just have the other one on the castle gate because that makes sense. You got one traveling with him and one guarding the gate. Um, same as the other guys, just the color swap. And then our last figure here is this guy, which is exactly the same, except his accessories are different. He doesn't have the shield and he's got the halberd like we saw in the knight's procession. And there are actually five of these halberd knights that can be placed around and guard the castle. So that is cool. So now on to the castle, and as I told you, I've got these guards just kind of placed around the castle to fill it out. So the first thing we see here is this uh, drawbridge that can just be winched up just like this. And it works just as well as any other drawbridge in a LEGO set, so no complaints there. And overall, the layout of this castle is pretty generic, but that's okay. It was their first castle after all. So we've got the gatehouse here, which is more just like an archway. And then we've got these two smaller towers on the right and left side. And then we've got the large central tower in the back. And one cool thing about this set for playability is that these wall sections here actually just hinge outward. So you can open it right up. So that makes it really great to be able to get inside and pose your minifigures around. And then you can close it on up and display it. And then you've got this walkway that goes all around each side. Um, it doesn't connect through the center. So you'll have to get up on one side or the other. But then it goes... And connects around to the front here and while there's no interior they did at least take some care by putting like an arch in here and putting windows around to make it look nice from the interior and you know you've got this fence here for detailing and then on the tower even they use some of these cylinders and some of these small one window pieces which look good you can also see they've got their crest placed around their castle in various locations now this is actually not an original sticker it's a reproduction and trust me, I've tried as hard as I reasonably can to find these uh, pieces. But the problem is, since it's placed over two bricks, almost nobody ever has them when the castle is being sold used. And trust me, I've done everything I can to try and find these pieces for a reasonable price. But the problem is, nobody ever really keeps them because they're stuck across two bricks there. So if you ever buy this castle set used, I would say 98% of the time, they don't have any of the stickers and I don't think I've ever seen one that's used that has all the stickers properly applied to the castle. So I would say just kind of give up on that if you're getting this castle used and just get reproduction stickers to place on it. Now I did get lucky with some of them. This one right here is actually original since it's only across one brick. That one's more common to find I would say. And then the one on this side is original as well. You can see it's got that crease down the middle. But it is a darker purple than the one that we see over here that's the reproduction. So there is some variance. And definitely by the texture you can tell that the ages of them are different. And that they were made out of different materials and all that. So you can tell the difference between originals and reproductions. And then on this side, this one is original as well. Although obviously it's in very rough shape there. As you can see, this is the reproduction one that I replaced it with when I got the uh, actual one. So this one would probably look better in its place, but just to me, knowing that that's the original sticker, um, I kind of enjoy that more, so I have it on right now. And then our last sticker here is this banner one that's across a 1x6 brick. This one is also a reproduction, unfortunately. Um, a little strange that this one's still hard to find when the one that's on the front is not as hard to find, but who knows. So while we're at the back here, I might as well show you it does have a back entrance, which is pretty cool. Now it's a little weird that these are not rounded off doors like we see in later sets, so it doesn't come up to fill this space of the arch, but the gate doors are at least plenty tall to be able to keep uh, unwanted visitors out. 
So on the outer wall here, we have some nice detailing up top and then with the little windows here and then the supports that kind of jut out. You've also got these black inverted slopes that go up underneath to make it look like it's kind of supporting it right there. So again, for the limited piece selection they had at the time, I think they did a good job of adding details all throughout to make it look more interesting than just kind of a, a flat square of yellow bricks. <laughs> but obviously, by comparison to any of the later castles, it does look very trivial. One last thing that I forgot to mention is this flag piece here. It is the same um, flag pole piece that we saw in the Knights Tournament set, although it is in white this time, and then it does have different stickers on it. And that is the... Uh, same sticker on both sides. So there you have it. That is Cheese Castle in all its glory. And I think if I'm being more objective with myself, I can admit that it's not that great of a castle, all things considered. And probably most of the ones after it are better builds. But there's just something so eye-catching and iconic to me, like I've said before, about just the all yellow, um, all the like banners and details and stickers and and, you know, 14 minifigures and four horses. It's just crazy. So, I mean, there's there's tons of play value here. It was definitely iconic for its time, and it stood the test of time. I think it's still a good display piece. I'm sure it would be a lot of fun as a play piece as well. And still just one of my favorite castles. So now adjusted for inflation, this set would have retailed for $143.71. Although current use prices have it at $274.45. Now, obviously, a big asterisk on that because, like I said, the, you know, condition of the minifigures, the visors, the stickers, whether the stickers are there or not, whether they're damaged or not, all those things play into the price of this, especially if it has, like, the box or the instructions. So I'd imagine one with the box, all the stickers, all the minifigures, all the visors unbroken, uh, instructions, obviously, everything like that could honestly run anywhere from the range of, like, four to $500.00 just because they're so incredibly rare at this point. But certainly if you wanted to just bricklink the pieces to the castle, just like the yellow pieces, you could do that for, I don't know, probably like 100, 150. Um, I know that's what I did the first time I got this set, and then I ended up selling that to get this, but yeah, it wasn't too expensive because a lot of it is just basic bricks, like one by twos, one by ones, one by sixes, stuff like that. Either way, thank you all for watching, and I hope you really enjoyed this uh, look back into LEGO's history with one of their most iconic castles ever. Also, I don't like to put, like, meta channel-related stuff in my videos very often, but we are so close to 1,000 subscribers, I think, when I checked today, it was at 998, so thank you all so much for that. I'll definitely, like I said, try to do that live stream whenever we cross 1,000. So thank you, thank you, thank you all for watching and just sticking around with this channel and helping it grow over this past year. It's been a lot of fun making these videos and seeing the channel growth along with that. It's very encouraging. So let me know what you think of this set in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.